Let me introduce myself. My name is Katarina Monkova and I am a lecturer at Faculty of Manufacturing Technologies in Prešov in Slovakia. Our faculty is one of the nine of nine faculties of Technical University of Košice. Košice and Prešov are near cities, while distance between them is about 35 kilometers. They are the second and the third biggest cities in Slovakia, after the capital city Bratislava. About 1,000 students study at our faculty. I would like to present to you my experience with verification of stiffness and surface treatment of newly designed axial bearing levers that was realized by static tests. Co-authors of my contribution are Marek Urban and Peter Monka. Plane bearings are undoubtedly one of the main parts of the power machines, such as a turbine or a compressor. However, there are many cases when in large power equipment, a symmetrically loading is occurring on bearings due to thermal deformations, production inaccuracies or simple deflections of the shaft. Over the last few years, thanks to increasingly precise manufacturing, solutions that can eliminate this phenomenon have been developed and so-called self-equalizing bearings have been used. At least two elements are required for the slide bearing, the bearing itself and the rotor collar. The sliding bearing contains segments to which lubricating oil is supplied. Each segment is a separate carrier part of the bearing. The bearing surfaces, both bearing and shaft collars, are completely separated by an oil film with a thickness of approximately 20 to 40 micrometers. The oil film avoids the risk of contact and therefore abrasion of the bearing surfaces. Self-equalizing thrust bed bearing consists of following basic parts. 1. Bearing body housing. 2. Thrust bed. 3. Self-equalizing element or lever. 4. Nozzle. 5. Floating pressure element. For every thrust, the pad is necessary to use two levers. It means that for example at 18 pads, bearing is necessary to use 36 levers. In the case of the thrust bearing, the most critical part is a system of very precise manufactured levers, which are in the close contact to each other. So they have to be not only properly designed from the geometrical point of view, but the important role plays also a quality of the functional surfaces of these levers. You can see such a bearing with a system of levers that has been designed by authors in the picture in the middle of the slide and the lever in more detailed view in the bottom part of the slide. The aim of the set of levers is to distribute the load evenly over the entire circumference of the bearing. The, even, the evenly distributed load is then transferred to the bearing housing and subsequently to the machine frame. The lever system must be designed and manufactured so that it is capable of transferring the pressure force exerted on the lower part of the bearing to the upper part of the bearing, i.a. that the axial bearing segments are always in contact with the shaft collar. In the pictures, you can see that acting force and at the bottom of the slide is presented the principle of the lever tilting, while on the left side it is without the shaft deflection, and on the right side when misalignment occurs. Due to the different mer mergers between global bearing manufacturers in the recent years, there are currently only three major global suppliers that produce these bearings as standard, i.a. not a special project. Each of these manufacturers uses, to a greater or lesser degree, a different design and manufacturing technology. A self-equalizing bearing with axial, axial tilting segments was newly developed in the framework of the presented research. Many aspects had to be taken into, into account, like at the bearing design within complex long-term research like material, geometry, technological conditions, surface integrity, and tribological properties and others. The goal of investigation that is introduced in the presentation is to study the influence of the surface treatment and to verify the stiffness of the levers of a newly designed 
itself equalizing bearing a stated load. The material of the levers has to therefore possess sufficient mechanical and tribological property, taking into account also aspects of the surface integrity. One of the steels most commonly used in the production of bearings within these applications and which meets the required characteristics of a highly stress functional component is DIN 34 nickel molybdenum steel and it was also selected for the bearing design. The geometry of the samples for, exper for experimental testing was built upon the research in which several variations of the lever geometries were gradually designed to create a functional model of the newly developed bearing. The kinematic functionality of all variants was verified by a simple test to measure the maximum deflections of the levers. Two most su suitable con contacts were cylinder cylinder and cylinder plane were selected for the testing influence of surface treatment and its ability to resist a static load. The elementary samples increased the test effi effectivity while the simplified testing samples were produced to simulate the contact, the specimens had the shape of a 12 mm diameter cylinder and 25 mm length or a plate of 25 times 25 times 10 mm which correlated with the size of a lever for a reference bearing with 18 pads. The technological conditions of samples manufacturing are listed at the bottom of the slide. All produce samples were heat treated due to material structure reinforcement and the quenching in oil at 830 to 860 degrees Celsius and tempering during the temperatures range from 630 to 660 degrees Celsius. The hardness of the base material was 330 Hb. The samples were electroless, nickel, plated and nitridite, while half of them was processed by tumbling and the second part of samples remained only coated. A total 108 pieces of samples have been produced. The samples were tested under a static load within this research. The proposed static load experiment experiments aim to compare the behavior of selected surface treatments and to monitor their response to static loads. Static load was carried out by hyd hydraulic mechanism at time durations of 10 seconds with four different loads. First was 500 kg as a nominal load, then 1000 kg that corresponds to overloading, 2000 kg to check a high overload and 5000 kg was employed to simulate an extreme overload. The self-equalizing mechanism do doesn't work here. Imprint evaluation was done employing Nikon st stereo microscope and the surface contact was evaluated by scanning electron microscope. In the pictures at the bottom of the slide, the imprints for a contact pair cylinder cylinder are presented with different surface treatment. The following pictures represent examples of surface contact evaluation while various behaviors of the nit nitridite or nickel plated layers have been documented, including cracks or material accumulation and the plastic deformation. The development of the wear evaluation for contact of two cylindrical surfaces, upper and lower cylinders, is shown in the dependencies on the load force for different surface treatments when in one graph the samples without and with tumbling are compared. The same evaluations were done also for the samples in contact pair cylinder plane. The pictures in the first row come from imprint documentation made by stereo microscope and the figures in the second row are the results of surface contact evaluation. Again, the dependencies of the wear on load force have been prepared while only wear on cylinders was evaluated. The measures were statistically 
statistically processed and from the average values the histogram for all samples has been prepared to compare the wear at individual surface treatments more easily. The nitridide layer in the static test showed good results at lower loads, IA, up to one ton, when the traces were not practi practically measurable after imp impressions. This layer is very hard and resistant to load, but on the other hand very brittle. Impressions with a load of one ton have already shown cracks visible by means of a stereo microscope. For impressions with a load of two and five tons, large cracks are visible within the limit the impression. In the case of nickel plated samples, relatively low hardness and high plasticity of the layer was seen compared to nitride samples. The width of the form cracks have similar dimensions compared to the tracks formed in the uncoated samples, which were only refined. After the simplified samples testing, the real self equalizing bearings were produced. The verified After the simplified samples testing, the real self equalizing After the simplified samples testing, the real self equalizing bearings were produced. To verify firstly their geometry, design and functionality, a force spectrum at every lever was measured through a special stand produced in cooperation with DOS and Škoda power presented in the fig figure below on the right slide. The measures were done firstly in a horizontal and then in vertical position. The ability to measure the bearing in vertical position is very important because the so-called rocker drop effect can take place here when the bearing in the horizontal position can work without problems but in the vertical position, which, al which is also its working position. Functionality is limited due to this effect. The measures were carried out at a constant force of 100 kN, acting at the center cylinder, and forces of 20, 40 and 70 kN at the side cylinders, which were intended to deflect the upper ground plate. At these loads, the ability of the assembly to deflect and the ability of the assembly to distribute forces under individual segments were measured. In the figure on the left side, the division of bearing with 18 segments into 4 quadrants and position of deflection indicators are shown. The plots in the bottom of the slide show trends in the force load distribution at individual segments measured at a lateral load of 70 kN and a central load of 100 kN. Finally, levers with nickel-plated surfaces were produced. Since this type of surface treatment showed the best properties in a combination of static and tribological tests, the lever was supported during the static test on both sides of hardened cylinders. The load force was 27 kN that was given based on the force distribution test described at the previous slide. Since the lever had a cylindrical shape on one side, left, and a planar sh shape on the right side, as it is shown in the picture, both contact pillars, both contact pairs, cylinder plane and cylinder cylinder, could be statically tested at the same time. Only the surface defects which are related to the formation of a layer, not with a static load, have been identified. Conclusion Where of the samples evaluation? Heat treated samples, sur surface protrusions, which are the remnants of machining, are retained even under a load of 5000 kg. The nitridide layers is very hard and resistant to load but on the other hand very brittle, while large cracks were visible at loads of 2,000 and 5,000 kg. Tumbling is a benefit for the overall su surface treatment when the surface is stripped of tops of roughness and after this technology. Therefore, the stress can be distributed over a large area and in the case of static load, less wear will occur. Evaluation of wear of, of the real nickel plated lever. Only impurities that appeared as defects when visually observed were present on the surface of the levers. 
In some cases, these were surface defects, the cause of which was the surface treatment technology. These defects were more visible in the levers, which was not treated by tumbling. The nickel plated levers have been produced and used for the production of the self-equalizing bearing, which was tested at three various devices. Experimental turbine dose and Škoda Power, TG10, experimental gear stand Experimental gear stand built by Hovden Cheka decompressors plus GTW bearings and experimental compressor set Darina IV Hovden Cheka de compressors. They have fulfilled all requirements and now they are implemented in real practice. Thank you for your attention.